April 21, 2024 Fourth Sunday of Easter Introduction Dear Brothers and Sisters, The readings for the fourth Sunday of Easter year B, invite us to reflect on the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd who lays down His life for His sheep. In today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter boldly proclaims before the religious leaders that there is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved, except the name of Jesus Christ. This is a powerful testimony to the truth that Jesus is the Good Shepherd who leads us to salvation and eternal life. The psalm reminds us to give thanks to the Lord, for He is good and His love endures forever. As beloved children of God, we are called to embrace our identity as His sons and daughters, knowing that we are loved unconditionally by our Heavenly Father. In today's second reading from the letter of John, we are reminded that we are children of God, and though we may not fully understand what we will become, we know that when Jesus appears, we will be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. This promise gives us hope and reassurance that we are called to share in the eternal life and glory of Christ. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us that He is the Good Shepherd who knows His sheep and is willing to sacrifice everything for them. This image of the Good Shepherd is a powerful reminder of the love and care that Jesus has for each one of us. The First Reading Acts 4 verses 8 to 12 Last Sunday, we heard Peter addressing the crowd of people that gathered around him at the porticos of the temple, at the sight of the crippled beggar he had just healed. The news of the miracle spread like wildfire, and the Jewish leaders, already nervous by the disturbing news of Jesus' resurrection which the apostles proclaimed, and of more and more people joining the group of converts, arrested Peter and John on the evening of that same day. The next morning, they brought them in front of the whole Sanhedrin, the supreme tribunal of the Jews, and questioned them about their activities. Today's reading gives the content of Peter's reply to their questioning. One can feel the Spirit speaking through Peter with a wisdom and firmness that left the Sanhedrin spellbound. You are looking for salvation in the scriptures, Peter told them. This cripple, now healed, points out at the only person who can see you, Jesus of Nazareth whom you killed. He healed many people during his preaching. He is still at work, and this man here, cripple until yesterday, and is proof that Jesus is once again alive and active. Like those whom Peter addressed, we are free to accept or reject Jesus in our lives. Those who reject him do so at their own risk. Peter invites us to make him, ever more decidedly the center of our life. The second reading, 1 John 3 verses 1 to 2. In the passage we have read, John, in a few, crystal clear lines, puts down what makes the core of our Christian identity, the foundation of our joy and our hope in Christian life. We are God's children already, John says. Baptism made us so and that is something no human person could ever dream to become. It took all of God's wisdom, power, and love to bring us into his own family. But children either grow or die. God wants us to go on growing spiritually through life, to reach full stature as Christians by the time our life on earth ends. And that, John goes on, will enable us to see God as he is when we die nay, to become like him. Could anyone long for anything greater? The Gospel Exegesis John 10 verses 11 to 18 Today's Gospel passage draws the contrast between the good and the bad, the faithful and the unfaithful shepherd. The shepherd was responsible for the sheep. If anything happened to a sheep, he had to produce some kind of proof that it was not his fault. Amos speaks about the shepherd rescuing two legs or a piece of an ear out of a lion's mouth, Amos 3 verse 12. The law laid it down, 
if it is torn by beasts, let him bring it as evidence, Exodus 22 verse 13. The idea is that the shepherd must bring home proof that the sheep had died and that he had been unable to prevent the death. David tells Saul how when he was keeping his father's sheep, he had a battle with the lion and the bear, 1 Samuel 17 verses 34-36. Isaiah speaks of the crowd of shepherds being called out to deal with the lion, Isaiah 31 verse 4. To the shepherd it was the most natural thing to risk his life in defense of his flock. Sometimes the shepherd had to do more than risk his life, sometimes he had to lay it down, perhaps when thieves and robbers came to despoil the flock. But, on the other hand, there was the unfaithful shepherd. The difference was this. A real shepherd was born to his task. He was sent out with the flock as soon as he was old enough to go, the sheep became his friends and his companions, and it became second nature to think of them before he thought of himself. But the false shepherd came into the job, not as a calling, but as a means of making money. He was in it simply and solely for the pay he could get. He might even be a man who had taken to the hills because the town was too hot to hold him. He had no sense of the height and the responsibility of his task, he was only a hireling. Wolves were a threat to a flock. Jesus said of his disciples that he was sending them out as sheep amid wolves, Matthew 10 verse 16, Paul warned the elders of Ephesus that grievous wolves would come, not sparing the flock. Acts 20 verse 29. If these wolves attacked, the hireling shepherd forgot everything but the saving of his own life and ran away. Zechariah marks it as the characteristic of a false shepherd that he did not attempt to gather together the scattered sheep, Zechariah 11 verse 16. We may note two further points before we leave this passage. Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. Now in Greek, there are two words for good. There is agathos which simply describes the moral quality of a thing, there is kalos which means that in goodness there is a quality of winsomeness which makes it lovely. When Jesus is described as the good shepherd, the word is kalos. In him there is more than efficiency and more than fidelity, there is loveliness. As the good shepherd, Jesus has a personal interest in every one of his sheep. Being a caring and providing shepherd, Jesus does what is best for the sheep, even to the point of laying down his life so that the sheep will live. Unlike the hired shepherd who is only looking for pay and what can be obtained from the sheep, Jesus establishes a close connection, relationship, with all of his sheep. They recognize and respond to his voice, and he responds to them. So, what are the lessons we can draw from these readings for our lives today? Lessons for Growth 1. Sacrificial Love Jesus emphasizes that the Good Shepherd is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. This act of sacrificial love demonstrates the depth of Jesus' commitment to his followers. As we strive for growth in our spiritual lives, we are called to emulate this sacrificial love by putting the needs of others before our own and making sacrifices for the well-being of those around us. 2. Intimate Relationship The Good Shepherd knows his sheep and they know him. This intimate relationship is based on trust, mutual understanding, and companionship. As we seek growth in our faith, we are called to cultivate a deep and personal relationship with Jesus, getting to know him through prayer, scripture, and reflection. This relationship will sustain us in times of trial and challenge. 3. Inclusivity and Unity Jesus emphasizes that he has sheep from other folds who will also belong to him. This highlights the universal nature of Jesus' love and his desire to bring all people into his fold. As we strive for growth, 
We are called to embrace diversity, welcome others into our community, and work toward unity and reconciliation among all people. For obedience and discipleship, Jesus emphasizes that he lays down his life voluntarily as an act of obedience to God the Father. This underscores the importance of obedience and discipleship in the Christian life. As we seek growth, we are called to follow Jesus' example by being obedient to God's will, seeking to align our actions with his teachings, and living a life of discipleship. The personal question or action for today. What does it mean to me that Jesus is the Good Shepherd? Reflect on Jesus' sacrificial love as the Good Shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. How does this concept of selfless love impact your understanding of love and sacrifice? Evaluate how you are shepherding and caring for those around you, whether it be your family, friends, colleagues, or community. Are you demonstrating sacrificial love and genuine care for those under your care? Consider your relationship with God and how you see Jesus as your good shepherd. Are you willing to trust him to lead and protect you even when facing challenges or uncertainties? Think about ways in which you can show compassion and empathy towards others, following Jesus' example of caring for his sheep. How can you reach out to those in need and demonstrate love in practical ways? If there are areas in your life where you have not been a faithful shepherd or have strayed from God's guidance, take this opportunity to repent, seek forgiveness, and commit to living a life that reflects the love and care of the Good Shepherd. Concluding Prayer Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, Abba, ever and loving parent. We lift our praise for your sending us your Son, Jesus, who has come as the Good Shepherd of our souls. We have not always followed the lead of the Good Shepherd. We have chosen to stray from his protection and to wander away from the flock that he tends. For those times, and our lack of appreciation for our human parents, we seek your pardon and forgiveness. Help us to be more attentive to the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls us to be part of his flock. May we work to bolster and support the other members of his flock and work for the unity of all under Jesus' leadership. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, your Son, and our risen Lord, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah.